Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Thank you for choosing to spend a little time with us viewing our Thursday night Bible study. I pray that you will receive something that will prepare you for your journey. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us to understand and trust Jesus to be concerned always about our rest and peace in times of storms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight's subject is uh, rest and peace are a concern to Jesus. In other words, our rest and peace during times of storms of life are a concern of Jesus. And yes, he does care about us. Uh, our study text for tonight is Mark chapter 4, uh, verse 38 and 39, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. That's Mark chapter 4, verse 38 and 39. It reads, but he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm uh, over the sea. Now, the disciples were normal people, just like we are. And that's evident uh, in the way that they were uh, afraid to die. They were not ready to die. None of us, no matter how bold we might talk and how uh, strong our faith seems to be, none of us are really ready to die. So the disciples, uh, since they were not ready to die, they did the logical thing, which was uh, going to the one that they had confidence in to keep them safe in this sudden storm that has arose. They went to Jesus and asked him if he cared about them. If he cared, that would be an indication that he would have not allow something uh, dreadful to happen to them. And since Jesus was the reason they were on the Sea of Galilee at his request, that we remember in Mark chapter 4, verse 35, where he uh, says to them, let us go across to the other side. So they obeyed him. Uh, and uh, so out of obedience to their master, they took Jesus as he was and boarded the ship and started for the other side. To obey Jesus sometimes may seem not to be the right choice. So often, uh, some of us and uh, uh, some of the, especially some of the disciples, were professional fishermen and were familiar with how quick a storm could come up on the Sea of Galilee. But they most likely would have tried to persuade Jesus to delay the trip had they known that a storm would develop during their trip. It's customarily easy uh, to follow Jesus when we are not aware of definite danger ahead. On the other hand, now Jesus knew that a fierce storm would develop and he would and, and he could have instructed them to to, to go to the other side and he would walk over a little later. That way he would avoid the storm and they would be in it. Or uh, he could did like he did and, and said, let's go over. And, and, and the fact that Jesus went with them in the, to the storm is to say that Jesus does care about them. That's a key. Wherever we find ourselves that Jesus has instructed us to go, we can be assured of the fact that he would be with us. And that is an indication that he cares about us. There are no situations or dangers that we can encounter in life that the omnipresent Jesus Christ will not be with us. Hebrews chapter 13, verse five, verse five rather says, uh, and, 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 and I'm paraphrasing and I'm kind of, well, I read the whole verse and said, let your conversation be without covetedness and be content with such things as you have. For he 
had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Now, if, if Jesus is going to be with us in whatever situations we're in, then we can be content that, that Jesus is going to take care of us. Even in, in storms of life, we can be assured that Jesus will take care of us. Now, the Bible distinguishes Jesus from regular shepherds by telling us that Jesus is the good shepherd who will lay down his life for the sheep while others were only hireling or hired hands that were in it simply for the money. Biblically speaking, John chapter 10, verse 11 through 15 says, I am the good shepherd, says Jesus. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep and he who is a hired hand uh, and not a shepherd who does not lay down his sheep, nor does he own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. And, and here's the main part that I wanted to point out is he flees because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. But Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Now, note the trait of God that uh, God, the father, which is found in Jesus, the son. In the book of Genesis, God cares about Adam and shows it by recognizing that he that that, that he was going to do something about the fact that it was not good for Adam to be alone in the garden. So God himself uh, made for him a helpmate, someone to be with him so that he would not be alone. Now, the fact that Jesus was with them is and not somewhere else, possibly where uh, it would have been safer or uh, would have been a great indication that Jesus cared merely because he was with them. If he had not been with them, he wouldn't, it would have been an indication that he didn't care. Now, Romans chapter eight, verse 31 says, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Psalms 27 and one says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalms 84 and 11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor, and no good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. And then Isaiah uh, chapter 54 verse 17 says, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. And so the, the uh, and John's first uh, John four and four says, uh, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. We have overcome the world. We are overcomers. And the reason we are overcomers is because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And if I can paraphrase that verse, uh, greater is he that is with us in the ship in a storm of life and it's raging than he that appears to be safe. We're better off with Jesus in a storm than we are safe without him. Our rest and our peace are a concern to Jesus. Check this out. The disciples were seasoned fishermen. Most likely they had been caught in storms before. But this storm was more violent and fierce than any of the storms they had faced prior to this storm. They feared that they were perishing, that they were about to die. They couldn't jump out of the ship and run to shore. They couldn't uh, radio the, for the Coast Guard to come and rescue them. 
They had the solution to their problem with them already. Jesus promised to be with us always, even to the end of the world. And, and, and we should never fear. Because he will be by our side. And he did say that, that, that he's coming back to receive us unto himself, that where he is, there we may be also. So in other words, if he's never going to leave us, even until the end of the world, and he's coming back for us one day so that we can be with him, that says to me that while we are here, he's going to be with me. And when he comes back to get me, I'm going to be with him. I will never be without Jesus. Now, Moses was afraid of the Egyptians behind him and the Israelites. And they had to see the Red Sea in front of them and mountains on the side. And they had nowhere to run. But God asked Moses a question. What is that in your hand? And Moses said, a staff. God told Moses to use what he had. So Moses stretched out the staff and the sea parted. And we as followers of Jesus Christ have got to learn to use what we have. There's a story that I, I, I tell sometime about a father and his son. The father told the son to go out and move a boulder in the yard over to the edge of the uh, out of the way. And the father told the son, uh, as he always told him, uh, I'm here to help you, son, no matter what what the need is, you can count on me to help you. So the son went out early that morning with the instructions to move the boulder and he tried many good ideas, but none were good enough to move the boulder, not even an inch. And the son, after spending all day to no avail, finally went inside and told his father, I've tried everything and I haven't been able to move the boulder. The father asked his son, did you use all that you had? The son answered, yes, I tried many different ideas with different stuff that I found in the yard. Nothing worked. And the father asked the son, did you come inside and ask me to help you? And the son, uh, no, dad, I'm sorry I didn't. We, like that son, so often forget to ask our Heavenly Father for help. At least the disciples came to Jesus and asked for help when it seemed like all hope was lost. And a lot of times we wait until it seems like all hope is lost. We make Jesus last on the chain that we go to for help. It's kind of like James 4 and 2 says, we have not because we ask not. That's another one of those things that, that we don't have the help that we need because we simply don't ask for it. They had, the, 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 mm, excuse me, the disciples had tried to handle the situation themselves, but the situation had gotten out of hand. And too often we wait until the situation get out of hand before we go to Jesus. Maybe they thought Jesus would wake up on his own. Maybe we think that, just, that Jesus would just run to our side and, and take over and save us without us ever having to ask. Having to ask reminds us to go to Jesus for help. Note the exact words of the disciples. They said, Master, carest thou not that we perished? They confessed that they felt in their minds that they were perishing. They were about to die. And they had started out 
originally handling the stone. But after trying to batten down the hatches and hoist the sails in an attempt to maneuver the ship out of the storm, they realized that they were no match for the storm. And there are some storms of life that we are no match for. But the disciples stand before Jesus asking him, do they care? But they did confess their humanity, their human inabilities and their need for his help. Now, Psalms 121 verse 1, and I'll read the whole psalm, it's not known. It says, I will lift up mine, high, mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Now, in reality, the hills will not help the sons. But he goes on to say, my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. And he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee neither sleeps nor slumbers. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, and the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, and he shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in, even from this time and forevermore. The response of Jesus to the plea of the disciples was dramatic. Note what Jesus did and what happened. First of all, he rose. And then he rebuked the wind and listened at what happened. And the wind ceased. He spoke to the sea. And there was a great Come. The word peace in this instance in the Greek means literally to be muzzled. He showed that the fury of the violence in the storm was not powerful enough for him not to be able to control it. The power of Jesus to control the sea and its storms to control is it shows his power to control nature and it demonstrate three facts. The first fact is that Jesus Christ is the son of God, the sovereign Lord over all nature and life. He's not only a. Uh, uh, the one that possesses a, the authority of God, but as Mark uh, sets it out uh, in his book, he shows that Jesus himself is the son of God. The second fact that's demonstrated is that Christ can come any storm of life for us even. And Jesus, uh, uh, Matthew uh, 28 and 18 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then in Romans chapter 1 verse 4, it says, And declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. The third fact is Christ can strengthen us to go through any storm. He can strengthen us that we'll be brave enough to go through any storm or any trial of life. First uh, Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 says there hath no temptation or trial taken you, but such as is common to man. The storms of life that we go through are the same storms that others go through. 
So we should not feel like we're going through something that everybody else don't go through. It goes on to say, who will not suffer you to be tempted or tested above that ye are able, but will with the temptation or test also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Now, in my grandmother's voice, this is what she used to say. The Lord won't put more on you than you can, can't can handle, or he, he won't put more on you than you can handle. If the Lord allows a storm to come in your life, he knows that you can handle it. And then uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 says, Blessed be the God, or blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercy and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all of our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. In other words, God comforts us so that we can go and tell others that he will do the same for them. He will comfort them in their tribulations, in their trials, in their uh, storms of life. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and make manifest the savior of his knowledge by us in every place. Wherever we go, whatever storms of life we may encounter, it is so that others can see Christ Jesus in us. That they can see that he's a very present help, not only in times of trouble, but in trouble. Ask Daniel in the lion's den. Ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. He's a very present help in trouble. The king got up that morning and he asked those that he had put in charge of throwing the three Hebrew young men in the fire. Didn't I tell you guys to throw three in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? And they said, yes, we did as you uh instructed us. He says to them, well, then why do I see a fourth one? And he looks like the son of a God. Even the enemy can see that Jesus is with you when you're in trouble by the way you respond to it. Second Timothy chapter four and 18 verse 18 says, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. And then uh, Psalms 91 verse three says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snares of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. And I throw this in. Even from COVID-19, the Lord shall preserve us and, and, and deliver us through it all. The worst storms of life that all of mankind has ever faced and had no one to go his bond or to help him out was sin. But God, God's only begotten son, and whenever you see the word but, most of the time in the Bible, God is getting ready to turn things around. If, 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 it, if it was not for God, but God is the reason that I'm not dead in, in sin. 
but for God, prostate cancer would have took me out. But for God, an automobile accident and my automobile burst into flames and I was not able to get out until. Woo, now, I went to the, drop, the passenger side and tried to open that door. I went back to the driver's side and tried to open that door, and neither door would open. So I just sat up in the middle and I said, Lord, have mercy. And then for some reason, seeing all of the flame all around the car, I tried the driver's side one more time, and it opened. But God kept the flames from from uh, singeing my the hair on my arms, my Jerry curl uh, hair with all of that grease and oil in it. Nothing was burned. God will turn our situation around. While we were sinking in sin. God sent his only son down through 42 corrupt generations, landed in a little town named Bethlehem. He was born in a manger and went about doing good, giving sight to the blind, loosening stammering tongues, opening the deaf ears, raising the dead. And then to seal the deal, he died in another man's place, buried in another man's tomb, and he died. But early the third day morning, he rose with all power in his hand, power over the wind and the sea. And just by saying, peace be still, the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us to use the help that we have and remind us that you stand with outstretched arms, bidding us to come unto you and find rest for our soul. In Jesus, our storm calming Savior's name, we pray. Amen. Well, that's it for this week. I pray that God will take uh, the words as they have left my lips and before they reach your ears and make them what you need. Give the power to those words to help you to make it through the storms or at least to have confidence that all you've got to do is call on the name of Jesus and he will see you safely through. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. I've realized that you had other options, but you chose to spend a little time uh, viewing this uh, uh, Bible study video and I'm so grateful. Remember, as you go through life in these months to come, wear a mask, practice social distancing or physical distancing, and wash your hand often. And I, like many others, believe that just wear, doing those three things might save our lives and it can save other folks' lives. So let's participate. And don't forget, on November 3rd, go and vote. So long. Love you. Bye-bye.